Hi guys, what's happening? I'm Patrick Lemon. In today's video, I'm going to lay down my actual criteria for making a good puzzle game. In the next episode, I will start to actually make the game. If you haven't seen episode 0, I explain the project quickly in that, so go check it out. Okay, awesome, let's get started. Firstly, I want to summarise my main thesis for making good puzzle games. I actually designed this to make strategy games, but as I haven't talked about it before, I'll show it to you now as a puzzle game design tool. So the whole thing is summarised in two steps. One, design a simple, elegant, functioning machine that has emergent complexity. Two, create windows into the machine, highlighting specific parts of how it works as jokes of understanding um, inside the puzzles to be explored and completed. I think this is really interesting, especially because it takes the focus away from creating puzzles in your puzzle game until later in development. Step 1 requires you make a fully functioning, elegant game and not worry about the level design as much as you worry about the interesting interactions of rules. Step 2 then allows you to not worry about making interesting rules anymore, but focus on packaging these jokes of understanding into playable levels. It's helpful also because when you're iterating, you can find where you went wrong by asking if the problem is from the mechanics or the communication with the player. The answer from that will allow you to address the part of the game responsible for the problem. I think this is a really cool way of thinking about making games, and look forward to being able to see its strengths and weaknesses throughout the project. One of the problems with it is that step one talks about making a simple, elegant, functioning machine. This is obviously much easier said than done, so I'm going to be laying down my criteria for making a good puzzle game. Um, I'll start with the more general criteria first. Number one, the game should be uncomplicated to both play and learn. Number two, the game should have a strong core mechanic that is simple and easy to learn and use. Number three, the game should have a small amount of content. After all, we want emergent complexity, not content complexity. Number four, no complicated inputs or timing skills. The game will function as if it were turn-based. We are looking to test a person's puzzle-solving skills, not their reflexes or anything else. Five, the game will not intentionally waste the player's time. And now I'm going to talk about some more specific criteria. Number one, the game, in general, will be a complete exploration of a single mechanic. Number two, controls-wise, the player should be able to quickly and easily move back through their moves at any point to eliminate wasting the player's time. They should also be able to hit the restart button quickly without any delay. Number three, each puzzle will have a specific relation to the other puzzles that the player has completed. There will be no random, out-of-order puzzles. Number four, the game will have a single focal point. I've written about this before in regards to strategy games, and it doesn't necessarily mean the player will have a single avatar, but it does mean that they'll have a reference point for the decisions that can be made, and where to start thinking about the decisions from. Number five, inspired by Jonathan Blow, and without a better way to describe it, each section's puzzles tell a small story. A non-verbal communication with the designer to the player, pointing something funny out that you didn't realize about the rules that the mechanics create. This concept lies at the heart of what makes puzzle games good and valuable to players. I call these jokes of understanding. I hope you enjoyed this episode. There is so much to talk about here, and I'm really looking forward to having a discussion with you guys. If you have any ideas about the format, also, please let me know. The next episode, I'll be finally starting to make the game, and analyse the progress and design choices I make. Thanks for dropping by, and I'll see you next time.